So in this talk, I will introduce uh, autistic a uh, method to generate and verify the semantic signatures. And this one can be useful to detect the metamorphic malware. And my name is Nguyen Quỳnh, I'm working for Cosing. Okay, at first I will uh, talk a, a little bit about the motivation be behind my talk. So people in uh, industry uh, always crit criticize antivirus, or AV in short, because they cannot detect malware timely and properly. And one of the area that um, AV suffer most is that they cannot detect metamorphic malware. So uh, metamorphic, metamorphic, metamorphic malware is a concept that was introduced quite a long time ago, about 15 years ago, and so many years passed, but still nowadays AV cannot detect them properly. And uh, Metamorphic malware was introduced. Intr they introduced many interesting concepts to bypass the the scanning signature employed by the AV, and uh, this problem is still uh, happen now. And in this uh, research, I I propose another new method, and this one is called optic. And we propose uh, to use semantic signature that's different from the current signature in the AV. And uh, OTC can be used to detect the met metamorphic malware. So we try to raise the bar higher so we can solve this problem somehow. So in this talk, I will uh, first uh, introduce the problems shortly uh, with the current antivirus and why they have so many problems to detect the metamorphic malware. And after that, I introduce autistic and the concept of semantic signatures and how it can be used to uh, detect the metamorphics. Next, I will uh, explain how uh, autistic can generate the uh, semantic signatures. And after that, I have some light demo. Uh, hope, hopefully, you can you you like it. And conclusion at the end of the talk. Okay, so. Uh, Malware as a program that causes damage to the computer users. And one I important thing about the mail, uh, malware is that they propagate and multiply themselves when they infect your machine. And to detect the malware, of course, we use the uh, antivirus or AV. And the um, main method for the AV to detect the malware is to use a signature. So basically, um, uh, the, on the malware, uh, the, on the AV, they have a huge database of signature, and each malware has one signature inside the database. And when the AV uh, want to detect the the uh, the malware, they will scan the suspected file with some signatures inside the database signature. And if this signature match this file, the AV can tell you that this file is infected by this malware and the signature is for the malware. And this this one thing we, we we can see that the signature is all about syntactic. Why? Because the signature can be a range of code extracted from somewhere inside the malware. And they, they, they take it as a signature. Or uh, more flexible, they can have the, another type of signature is a, in a regular expression form. Or they can combine with some logical uh, combi combination uh, to have a more flexible uh, signature, and that is a, that's what uh, Clam AV is, is doing. Here's one uh, simple uh, signature. I take this one from Clam AV. So you can see that this one, this file, they have a very special code right here. And this code, uh, this one's malware, this code. This code, we don't see that anywhere in the normal file, not anywhere. And this, this code is specific for this malware. So they take this code out and consider it a signature. So if you match this signature with a particular file, and you see, you match, you can match it with signature, you can see that this file is, is this malware. And this, in this case, it's a Georgian.exchanger. So this is the signature for Georgian.exchanger. 
Uh, however, you can see that uh, the signature like in this case is not very flexible because with each malware you, you need one signature, right? So they have a more flexible signature. It's called something like regular expression. So here we have two malware. 5.exe and 7.exe and you can see that they have some code inside and these two code are very similar except for by in the middle you see the first part are same the last part are same but the four by in the middle are different so they try to combine these two signatures into one and they have the signature here so they, they take the first part here last part here and some somehow in the in the middle we have four bytes and the four bytes can be anything so with this regular expression signature we can detect both seven and seven dot exe and five dot exe so this signature can detect more than one malware right so it's more flexible however all of them are still syntactic and there are some problems with the syntactic signatures first uh, we need to update the signature for each version of one malware because the malware, when they infect, they can change themselves. So each version of the malware, you need one signature. And because there are so many malwares, the signature database is getting bigger and become a major issue for users. The other problem is that it's very hard to catch up with a new wave of malware because there are too many malware. And we need a new signature for each malware and that is a big problem. Finally, the syntactic signature is very easy to be evaded by the metamorphic malware. So what is the metamorphic malware? Okay, uh, this concept was first introduced about 15 years ago in the malware named uh, RexPep for Windows 95. And metamorphic malware is designed specifically to defeat the syntactic signature. And you can understand that when the malware in go into your machine, it try to infect many files, as many as possible. So suppose that it infect first file and second file. So when it, when the malware infect your, your file, it will inject some code into each file, right? So the idea is that they don't, the metamorphic malware, they don't inject the same code into two files. They, in, they inject two different code, even they do the same thing. So two different code transform one from another do the same thing, but being injected by different files. And that is the concept of the uh, metamorphic malware. So we can see that uh, metamorphic malware uh, introduced many problems for the syntactic signatures. Why? Because which, each infection by metamorphic malware, we need one separate signature. And uh, because uh, in theory, the metamorphic malware can can generate an uh, infinite number of uh, infection. So we should have infinite number of signatures. And that makes the, uh, the signature database very huge and just understandable. And second, um, it's not only that the database is huge, but metamorphic malware can totally bypass the, the syntactic signature. Okay, here's is how, how the metamorphic can uh, defeat the syntactic signatures. So the metamorphic malware use many different techniques, but I, I will introduce us some the most popular techniques. So they use four transformation techniques to, to infect your, your, your file. First one, uh, they use a transformation thing in their name insert that code. Second one, substitute instruction with ET equivalent instruction. And the third transformation technique is reorder instruction. And finally, they can combine all of the those three methods to make the the code much more complicated. First one, what is the insert that code? That code here means that uh, when you have the code and have that code inside, the code is the code that if you remove it, there's nothing changed. There's no impact. The code doesn't make any impact to your code. And uh, in insert that code method, there are four uh, 
swan method. First one, insert that instruction. Second, insert no operation, semantic instruction. The third one, insert unreachable code. And the last one, insert branch instruction to the next instruction. And now we go into each method. First one, insert that instruction. So we can see on the, on the left side, the original code is copy the 5555 to EDX. And when the metam metam metamorphic uh, transforms this code, it insert another instruction. Before that, copy 30 to EDX. So you can see that this one's that instruction, right? Because below we copy 555 to EDX. So this one is that code. You can, you can remove that. There's no problem, no impact. But you can see the transform code look very different. So you can see that the left code and the right code, they do the same thing, but syntactically they look different. Okay, another method is insert a uh, knob semantic instruction. So the idea is that uh, the malware, when they transform the code, they insert some code that does, actually does nothing. So here, the or original code is on the left side, and when they, uh, the malware transform it, it insert two instructions, one before and one after. And you can see it move from EDI to EDI, does nothing, right? Move, uh, exchange CX with CX, does nothing. Exchange one register with itself. So you can see that the left code and the right code looks very different, but they do the same thing, right? So the term method is insert unreachable code. And metamalware, uh, metamorphic malware is a lot. So here you can see the, uh, on the left side the original code. And here, when it transform itself, it insert a jump label to here. And in between, it insert jump, jump code. It can be arbitrary long. And you can see that this jump code is not, doesn't work, um, it's not executed. It's not unreachable. But you can see the left side and the right side looks so different. Even, even they do exactly the same thing. The last one, insert a branch instruction to the next instruction. So you can see another transformation on the right side. So you insert a jump here, jump to the next one. Which really, it does nothing. But the code looks very different. Okay, that is the first method, insert that code. A very nice uh, transformation method for metamorphic malware. Second one, uh, substitute instruction with equivalent instruction. So see here, one example. On the left side is the original code, and on the right side is the transform code. You can see that here. The malware try to substitute move zero to SI, ESI with move one to ESI and after decrease it. So you can see that this one and this one, they are the same thing. Copy zero to ESI. But it looks, it looks very different. And here, move one, two, three, four, zero, zero to EDX, which can be, do, uh, can be done with. Copy one, two, three, four and something to EDX and after that is zero DX, DX, which make the, the, the last two by zero, right? So this one and this two instance, they do actually the same thing. But you can see left side and right side are very different. The third method, uh, reorder instruction. So here also we have original code and transform code. So on the left side we have copy zero to ESI and after that, uh, copy something to EDX. And when they transform the code, the malware transform, they reorder these two instructions. And you can see, right side and left side, they do exactly the same thing. But syntactically, they, they are different, right? And finally, we come, you can combine 
the first, the second, and the third uh, method, uh, which, which has a, and you, you can generate a very completed code. So you can see that uh, metamorphic mirror really uh, introduced a big problem for the for the original for the legacy uh, uh, signature scanning AV. You can see that uh, so far no AV can detect uh, the meta metamorphic mirror like this. So the question is how to detect a metamorphic malware. So you can see that uh, we have few transformation here. So we break it down and we try to show each problem. So we want to we want to detect the insert echo, we want to detect the substitute with equivalent instruction, we want to detect the insert branch in instruction to in next instruction, and finally we try to uh, detect the reorder instruction and how to show each of them. And if you can show all of them, you can show the problems. Okay, so the detecting metamorphic mirror is a very hard problem. And in this research, we just try to solve the core problem, not everything, but the core problem, which is that given two different code, like in the assembly form uh, you see here, can we answer that the left code and right code, they do the same thing or not? So you want the answer, yes or no? We don't. We don't need answer. Might be that yes or no, and if we can uh, have the answer that the left code and the right code do the same thing, we can consider this one the signature, right? And all the code that transform from here from this code to something else that match with this one can be considered to be from the same malware, from from the same metamorphic malware, right? So. Our problem here is that we try to compare two sequence of machine code, and we can we need the answer yes or no is that they are equivalent or not. And here comes the op optimistic solution. So with optimistic, we propose a semantic signature, not a syntactic signature, and this one is another approach to verify the suspected file. So we propose a semantic signature to fix the problem of syntactic signature. And what is a semantic signature? Semantic signature is something that contains the semantics of the code to be verified, not the syntactic. And the advantage of semantic signature is that we can detect metamorphics that when they transform themselves, they keep the behavior unchanged. So if they keep behavior in change, we can detect that. And if we can uh, detect the transform code, so we don't need to update the signature for each infection of the metamorphic any, anymore, right? We don't need to update uh, the new signature for each infection. So it's, it's very good. Okay, so here's how we create the semantic signature. Uh, first one, we create the semantic signature on the machine code, the binary code. And the signature of the code is actually the formula, the first order logic formula of the code, which express the semantics of the code. And after that, we use theorem prover to compare the two signatures, which are actually the two logical formulas. So you can see here on the diagram here, we have two code. This one is considered the uh, signature for the malware. This one is the transform code. So with the signature, we generate the logical formula, and we consider this one semantic signature. And when you come want to verify something with this signature, we also do the same thing. We also generate the logical formula for this code. After that, we fit these two formulas to the theorem prover. And this one can tell you these two formula are equivalent or not, which means these two go are equivalent or not. And if we have the yes or no question, uh, is a, we have the answer as yes or no here, we, we can show our problems. So what is the semantic signature for, for the code? Here are some uh, very simple example. So basically, the, um, for the simple code like 
arithmetic or moving data instruction, we encode them like this. So on the left side, we have the memory code like this. Copy 48 to ESI, copy 207 to EDX. And the logical formula for this code is ESI equal to 48 and EDX equal to 207. And that is the logical formula for the left code, right? And in case the code contains the control flow, we break down the code into the control flow graph with a basic block inside, and we follow we follow the control flow. For example, here, mirror code here. Here we compare EAX to 32. If EAX is 32, we jump here and copy EDX to ECX. Otherwise, we saw ESI with ESI, right? And the logical formula consider two branch. If EX is 32, we assign EX to ECX. Or if EX is not 32, we set zero to ESI, right? That's how we create the logical formulas. That's all. These are very simple, simple, but you can imagine what it does. Okay, but however, just something to be careful. Because note that here we have logical formula. And can you tell me? Anyway, tell me. Is there anything wrong with this? We have the left, the code on the left side, we have logical formula for this. For it on the on the right side, anything wrong here? What's wrong? What we are doing here is a logical formula, not a side 48 to ESI, not a side 207 to ESI. So that means this one is not acceptable. You cannot have 48 ESI as 48 and later ESI is 207. It's conflict in the logical formula. Logical formula doesn't accept the conflict. So what you're doing here is not assign something to variable, but you have the formula, logical formula, and cannot be conflict, right? So how to solve this problem? Here's how we solve problem. We use a method named single static assignment. Which, which is borrowed from compiler technique. So whenever we, we, we have the new value for the variable, we don't override it, but we create the new variable. So in this case, I create the new ESI1. So we have ESI1 equal to 48, and ESI1, uh, uh, ESI equal to 48, and ESI1 equal to 207. When after this, on the reference to ESI should reference to ESI1, right? So there's no more conflict, and we use single static assignment uh, to solve the problem. So this one, uh, we must be very careful. Okay, so um, it looks uh, very nice, but there are many challenges to to implement the ideas. So there are two challenges. The first, machine instruction can overlap in semantics. For example, move EBX uh, to EX is actually what a, a lot load effective rest from EBX to EX here, right? So we have a problem because the Intel uh, Intel instruction set are very complicated, and there are many overlap instruction. And that make uh, analysis, analysis very complicated. The second problem is that the instruction in itself may have multiple implicit side effects. For example, put EAX, actually it does many things inside. And what it does is that it copy EAX to the stack, and after that, it move ESP, the stack pointer down for bytes, right? So there are many side effects inside one, one simple instruction. So to uh, solve this, those problems, we first we first uh, first we need to normalize the machine code to a uh, intermediate representation language or IR. And now we need the IR, and we need to normalize the code to IR. So we have some requirements for the IR. First, IR must be very simple, no overlap. Second, IR must express its semantics explicitly 
without side effect. We don't we don't want any side effect inside the, the IR, right? And finally, IR should support static single assignment, SSA. Because we need to generate the logical formula from the from the normalized code. Right? So we have three requirements. And here's what we work. We I detail the, the, the diagram here. So first we need to translate machine code. We need to normalize the machine code to our IR. After that, somehow we need to optimize it. Later, I will explain you how, uh, why we need to optimize it. After that, from the normalized and optimized IR code here, we generate the logical formula. And we do the same thing with the code that we want to verify again the signatures. Everything will be fit to the theorem prover in the last step. Is it clear? So the question is that we need the IR to normalize the code. So the big question is which IR? Uh, the next step, I introduce LLVM project, and you will see why LLVM is important for, for OptiSeq. Anybody uh, here already heard about LLVM or use LLVM before? No? Anybody here use uh, Mac OS? Do you ever write program in Mac OS and compile that? So, the question is because um, nowadays uh, the compiler on the Mac OS X, they all use LVM behind as a compiler technique. And LVM project is an open source project for the compiler. And LVM, the rest is there. And LVM project, um, they offer a set of frameworks so you can build the compiler very easily very quickly. And the core of the LVM is the LLVM IR. They have IR inside. And on top of the IR, we have a lot of optimization module ready to use. And everything is ready and open. So take a, a short look at the preview of the comp compiler model. Here, you can see that uh, in the normal compiler, we compile, uh, you need to compile from source code to the machine code, right? And the compiler, actually, there are few, three components inside, three key components. First, the front end, which translates the source code to the IR. And after that, the compiler has a second component to optimize the IR. And after this step, the optimized IR will be compiled by the back end to the machine code. That's all the compiler is doing to, to compile the code for you. And here, LLVM, they use the same uh, model, but they break three components here, and they create a very clean and very um, explicit interface between three, the co three components. So we have here, first, we, we have the front end, LLVM front end. LLVM front end will compile your source code to LLVM IR, and after that, LLVM, LLVM IR will be fitted to the, the second component, LLVM optimizer. And after that, optimizer will send the optimized IR code to the backend. And after that, backend will generate, will, will generate the, the machine code for you. And here's the LVM model. And you can see the, it's important that they separate the front end optimization and backend. And the idea uh, why LVM is very useful because they have they introduced very clean and separately component which can be reused. So you imagine that if you want to um, write a new programming language, you just need to uh, program your front end. You translate the, your programming language to the LVM IR, and that's it. You don't need to do anything, because after that, you can reuse the optimizer already available, and you can reuse the backend already available. So what you need to do is just write your front end, and that's it, very easy. And that make uh, make the compiler uh, programming very much much easier than before. So the core, core component of uh, LVM is the the IR. So the LVM IR is the independent of the target architecture, which 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 means it doesn't depend on the your 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 machine. It can be x86, it can be PowerPC, it can be ARM, and it's a uh, reduce instruction set 
which means uh, they have very few instructions, not like the Intel. And it's a resistor-based machine, and they have infinite numbers virtual resistor. And the resistor also have a uh, type like high-level programming language, like void, float, integers, and it also have pointers. It type pointers can be integer, integers pointer, or float pointers, or anything. And here it's important. LLVM support SSA single single static assignment by nature by default. And the basic block of LLVM has only single entry and single exit. And finally, when you compile some source code to LLVM IR, we have LLVM bit code. Okay, next uh, LLVM instruction. Uh, LLVM is very simple. It uh, only introduced 30, 31 instruction. It's very simple. Designed to be very simple and no overlap. It supports arithmetic operation and in, on integers and float. You can add, sub, multiple, divide, remainder. It has a bitwise operation so you can end or saw and anything like, like on Intel. It has branch instruction, which is low level control flow. But this one, remember, is still unstructured, very similar to assembly, like what you see on the Intel. And um, this one thing uh, you need to know: the branch target must be ex explicit. You can uh, you can have you cannot have uh, indirect jump in LLVM, not like in Intel. So it, remember that on Intel. Instruction set is they allow the indirect jump, right? But on LLVM, IR, they don't allow that. And they have some instruction for the memory asset, load, store. Some instruction for compare, uh, no, compare and this one is to support um, SSA. Okay, here's a simple, a very simple, simple example. Also, here on the left side, we have C code. And we compile this C code to LLVM IR on the right side. Yeah, you can see. Here, so here is a function of LLVM IR. And here is a argument for the function. On the left side, we compare it. A is 0, we return B. And on the right side, we, we have a LLVM instruction. Here's a compare A to 0. And is it equal or not? If it's equal, we jump to done. Here. If it's not equal, you jump to the re recursive here. And you can see, that's, that's the LVM miracle. It looks uh, quite simple, right? Okay, so here's, here's another core component of LVM architecture. That is uh, op, uh, the LVM optimizer. And basically, we can fit the LVM IR to the optimizer, and it can optimize the code for you. And in L LVM uh, terminology, we call the optimizer LVM pass. And we can combine different paths with each other. And in LVM, there are few different kind of uh, paths. First one, the pass can be used to collect or visualize information. This one is not very, really, not very really important for for our project. The second one is very important. So LVM pass can be used to optimize the code to transform the bit code. And there's some others uh, pass which we don't don't care about. And in the latest version of LVM, the version 3.2, they provide 182 uh, passes that are ready to use. So that's a lot, and we just need to use it. Don't need to do anything. So here, uh, remember, we need to choose a IR to normalize the code, right? So here, we decided that we choose LVM IR as a language to normalize the code. So you can see that uh, originally LVM is was introduced to uh, for you to program your compiler, but we don't we don't we don't use LVM to 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 make the compiler, but we use LVM to normalize the code. And after that, we automate the code. So we choose uh, LVM because it satisfies all the requirements. 
for the normal radiation phase. And remember, we only use a subset of LVM. We don't use all the 31 instruction. We just use subset instruction. First of all, you can ignore the instruction that are uh, about the high level information that you can get from source code. But here, because we we are working with a low level machine code, so we can ignore those instruction. And LVM is good because it op uh, it offer you a framework, so we can process the output IR very easily. And finally, you can take the advantage of the L LVM optimizer. So you can optimize the bit code, and the result, the result bit code from this step, is normalized and optimized. And um, you can see that the, we have some LVM passes that have, that are very suitable, and those passes can be used to reverse the transformation of uh, meta metamorphic malware. So here is the. I detail my diagram. First, we need to translate the machine code to LVM IR. This one is similar to building the compiler front end, but it's, this one is not for high level language, but for machine code language, low level language. It's tough because yeah, the machine code is unstructured. So for example, we must deal with the indirect branch or shell modified code, which can be available in the, in the machine code. And it's not easy to to show. And for machine code, we build the control flow graph, and we have the, the, the control flow graph, flow graph in connect the basic blocks, and we go through it, go through each block, and we, we translate all the instruction in each block to LLVM IR. And this step, uh, to express uh, the semantics of the machine code, we need to reference to the, to the, to the ISA manual. And in this case, I need to uh, reference to the to the Intel or AMD manual. You can see. So here, here's one sample. We translate NEX EBX to LLVMIR, and here is a on the right side you ha you see the the LLVM code that does this. You can see it looks very complicated because we need to update the the flag right so it's not it's not that simple so one intel instruction can be translated to like 10 lvm instruction and after that we uh, optimize the bit code we got from the normalization step and here are some uh, optimization i am using first one constant propagation so this uh, LVM pass can simplify the code here, like here. You can simplify like y equal to 22. So another optimizer is a uh, eliminate dead store instruction. So you can have a, you have the simple code here, and here you can see that y equal to three is dead code, right? And DSE pass can remove this code. Next one, another pass combine instruction. Y equal to X plus one, Z equal to Y plus two. This one is actually Z equal to X plus three. And this pass can combine this code to be a simplified code on the right side. Another pass, uh, which is very important, is simplify control flow graph. You can be used to remove isolated basic block. It can be used to merge basic block into its predecessor if there's only one and only one and the predecessor has only one successor. Or you can merge a basic block that only contain unconditioned, unconditioned branch. So you see, you have Four chance of formation, right? Insert that code, substitute with equivalent instruction, insert branch instruction to next instruction, and on the first three transformation can be show with this LVM optimization. Like this, insert that code can be removed with DSE and simplify simplify control flow graph. Insert branch instruction to the next instruction can be removed with simplify control flow graph. 
and that make us uh, we show on the on the first three uh, transformation and what remains is the last one reorder instruction we cannot be shown by our VM so next we see how how we show the last last transform transformation so here I detail the diagram again uh, we generate the schematic signature from the normalized code so here so the semantic signature is actually a logical formula generated from the output IR of the normalization step. So we have machine code here, we normalize the code, after that we optimize, and we can remove the first three transformations. And after that we generate the semantic signatures. Right? Okay, so uh, about the um, logical formula, after we have the logical formula, we need to show it. And how to show it? Here, uh, we propose to use satisfiability modulo theories or SMT server. So SMT server is a theorem prover that's based on decision procedure. And uh, SMT server work with the logical formulas of different theories. And SMT server is, is very suitable because it can express the behavior of computer program. Very suitable. And it can prove a logical formula is satisfiability or validity or not. And this one is important. The SMT server can prove the equivalence of two logical formulas. And that's why we need it. Okay, so there are many uh, SMT server available uh, on the internet, but uh, here we use Z3 SMT server. And this one is uh, open source. SMT server coming from Microsoft and they support Linux and Windows and they provide the binding for C++ and Python. It support bit vector theory which is very, very useful to modern the arithmetic and logic operation. It support array theory which is good to modern the memory access and finally it support the quantifier exist or for own. Okay, so here we have the more detail uh, diagram. So we have two logical formula and we fit all of them to the theorem prover here or SMT server here. And this two logical formula we want to prove the equivalence equivalence of them, right? So we, we if we have um, this one and this one are equivalent, which means with the same input, same register input, it didn't produce the we need to produce the same output and that make it equivalent. Okay, here is a one example how we go from machine code to the, to the logical formula. So on the top we have the, the machine code here and we after the, after the normalization and optimization step we have this code. And from this code, we generate the logical formula, which come here in the last box. And this logical formula will be fitted to the Z3, and you can show it. Okay, so you can see that the last remaining transformation that was not shown by LVM can be shown by SMT server. Why? Here. We have a signature and the malware code here. You can see that the malware is a re, just reorder the two instruction in the signature, right? And with the signature, we have this logical formula. And with the reorder code, reorder instruction code, we have another logical formula. And you can see this one and this one they do the same thing. And the SMT server can show can 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 show that. It, it can it can tell it, it can tell us that this one and this one are equivalent. It can do this work very well. So we show the last transformation reorder instruction. Okay, so uh, that's our idea for Optisic, and we implemented that. We have the app, web interface for demo, and we have framework to generate the signature for machine code, and we can compare the signatures. And uh, 
of the signal they sub, uh, we support the 32 bit and 64 bit for Intel Intel platform and we use Z3 server to to process the logical formulas and the frame uh, the project it was uh, was imp implemented in Python and C++ and it takes about 5000 uh, lines of code okay here comes the interesting part the demo Okay, so the web page demo. You can see that. So it sounds very simple. We have two box here. So I will, I will pass two machine code, two assembly code on the left side and on the right side. After that, I click this button. And it can tell me uh, this code and this code are equivalent or not. Okay, you can see two assembly code. They look very different. The right code looks very simple, and the left code looks very complicated. And actually, the code on the left side they use many transformation method to make the code very long, very complicated. But actually, they do the same thing. The code on the left side was transformed from the code on the right side. So uh, I have some option here. I can select the assembly syntax it can be the code can be copied from IDA or from NAS, NASMA and I can choose 32 bit or 64 bit here and verify equivalent you see that the left code and the right code they are equivalent they do exactly the same thing now if you don't believe that I show you here we copy uh, 0 to EDX right we can do something different. Two. Now try again. Is it still equivalent or not? Different. Now, if later I decrease now. What is the answer? Equivalent. Right? We copy two to index and uh, later we, we subtract two from it. So we still make index zero. Now, if I insert some uh, knob semantic code here, let's see what happens. This one is knob code, right? That's nothing. This one is also knob code. That's nothing. Exchange CX with itself. And now see. Still equivalent. Okay. Now the, f the final demo. Here. Let's try again. Equivalent. Equivalent, right? Now I move this this junction to the to here. Is this still equivalent or not? Let's see. Still equivalent. Now you can replace this one with this one copy zero to EDX, right? So, now what is the answer? Still same, right? But is it actually same or not? Anybody tell me? Are they really equivalent? No, right. Because uh, move zero to EDX, doesn't change any flux. But so EDX with itself change uh, some flux. And here, okay, here's a copy from the Intel manual. Here. 
saw change many flux like O OF, overflow, side flux, zero flux, AF, parity flux, and CF, right? So actually saw doesn't really do the same thing as move zero to EDX. So here, equivalent. But now if you uncheck this, we don't ignore E-flux register update anymore. We, we take that into account and see what is the answer now. Different. Because now we, we care about the flux. Okay, a few more minutes, I am back to the slide. And that's the demo. Well, OTC looks nice, but there are some limitations that uh, cannot be shown now. First, uh, you cannot do anything with the cell modified code. Because what you are doing here is a pure static analysis. And static analysis cannot deal with the cell modified code. And if you have some indirect branches inside the machine code, we have a problem because remember that LVM they don't allow the indirect branch. And finally, the efficiency of SMT server really depends on the complexity of the machine code. So if the machine code is very complicated, complicated, SMT server can take a lot of time to run and to give you back the answer. And that that will be a problem. So the future work is that we. We try to solve the limitation somehow. And uh, maybe if we have time, we can try to implement the optic for the real AV. You can use CLAM AV, which is open source. So you can do that. And uh, we will deploy optic as an independent tool set for mirror analyst people. So uh, they, can, they, can, they can benefit from this tool. OK, here come conclusion. Syntactic signature totally failed to detect the metamorphic malware. And uh, we propose OT6, which is a semantic signature. And OT6 can solve the problems of syntactic signatures. And we can detect the metamorphic, which use popular transformation, the four transformation I, I introduced. And here I use two key uh, technology. First one is LL, LLVM, which uh, we use to normalize the machine code. And after that, we optimize away many junk code inside. And to compare the signatures, we use the SMT server. And we generate the logic and formula from the normalized code to, to SMT logic and formula. And after that, we use the, the server to, to verify the equivalence of them. Some references for you. Okay, so that's my talk, and any questions? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, right, uh, okay. So as I have a slide here, So in this talk, I just focus on the most popular transformation, which are simple enough for me to show. For those codes that are too complicated, the logical formula generated from the code can be very complex. And in that case, uh, this, this method cannot, uh, might be not very suitable. So yes, that is still the open problem for, for, for us to solve. Uh, yes, please. Yes. Okay, so in case of uh, memory access, right? Memory access is another problem because uh, if we don't really know uh, where the memory is. Uh, it's very hard to, 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 to generate the logical formula for that. So 
in the case that uh, the uh, memory access that access to the some fixed arrays, you can easily generate the logical formula. But if if it access to some uh, some indirect memory arrays, yeah, that's another problem. Thank you. So with this uh, optic, we we try to at least we know that is an open problem, which in theory cannot be totally so automatically. So what we try to do here is that we we try to raise the bar higher, so we can we can somehow detect some some metamorphism, but not all of them. So any other questions? Okay, so thank you very much.